But what he's saying to the church in Sardis is, you look like you're alive. Your name says you're alive. Everything about you makes it look like you are alive. But you are dead. We're the salt of the world. We've got to take the word of God in and use it. And it becomes salt that flavors and preserves the world. It actually affects the world in a way that's going to make it wake up if we live for Jesus Christ. Now, do I believe that we are going to rise up as believers in these last days and win the whole world to Jesus? No, that's not the scripture. Scripture says there's going to be a dual track that happens. The dual track is there are some who are going to separate from the world in such a way that they're on fire for God and trying to harvest in the world, many being rejected, many being persecuted, many being killed while they're doing it. But it also says many are going to fall away from the faith. I'm saying there are some, there are many today that are falling into that path that looks more and more and more like the world. It absorbs everything and every philosophy of the world. Still has the look of being Christian. It has the look of being godly, but it has de denied the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it is in danger of being blotted out of the book of life. And these people were right there. What a commentary. What a terrible commentary. So Jesus says, get your act together. Repent. Turn from that. Watch. Now the word watch there doesn't mean to just sit and, and look. It, it really means to take account. They were called to take account of their lives. How many think it's a good thing to take account of your life from time to time? But if you look at your life, the Holy Spirit will pinpoint some things and say, you know, you could use some work right there. And what's the work that needs to be done? It's repentance. The work that needs to be done is repentance. And by the way, what is that? It means you're walking this way, you stop walking that way, and you turn the other way. So if I'm having anger problems, I better deal with the issue that's causing the anger. Amen? Amen? And whatever that issue is, is not from without, it's from within. And anger generally is surfacing because there's some sort of guilt or, or a failure in your own heart that's still buried there and, and covered up. It needs to be revealed. What happens when it's revealed to the light? Darkness has to flee. You have to reveal it. The Lord reveals things in us when we self-examine and we understand this is what's caused half my problem because I'm carrying around this sin or this hurt or this root of bitterness. If I would just pull it out, it would solve a lot of problems that are being created because of it. You see, that's why we self-examine. That's why we look. And he tells them, watch. And if you're watchful, you're awake. But what happens when you're asleep? When you're spiritually no longer aware of what's happening in your life because you don't care, you haven't taken the time, you fall asleep. And how many times in these last days, in any last day reference of a scripture, does the Lord say, wake up? Or does the Apostle Paul say, wake up? Or does Peter say, wake up? Or John say, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up? There's a reason for it, because half the time we're asleep. So wake up. Number three, there are a few of you, he says, that have not soiled your garments. They have not run the way of the culture. And I love that part of it because what Jesus is saying is, is this. These slaves and these servants that you see walking around in white, you despise. You look at them as being your playthings. You look at them as being the ones who serve you. Well, the problem is you're supposed to be just like them as believers. Where does Scripture take away the idea that we're servants or even slaves before God? But Paul says this, I am a bond slave to God. I have bonded myself as a slave to God. And in that he found freedom. In that he found freedom. 
You're either a slave. By the way, all of us are slaves in one way or the other. We're either a slave to the world, which produces death, and I'm not talking about to the earth. I'm not talking about the I'm talking about the culture of the world, the philosophies of the world. Be not conformed to this world any longer, Romans chapter 12, verse 1, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Okay, so we're either slaves to that or we are slaves to Jesus. Which one's going to give you freedom? <laughs> I've been set free to be a slave for Jesus, meaning everything that he is, he has given to me as his as his adopted. Heir, and you too, we are heirs of the Father, joint heirs with Jesus Christ. But that sends us into a love that literally bonds us to Him. And that's where we find our freedom. And He says, that white clothing that I'm going to give you signifies the fact that you are the ones who are literally free. You are the ones who are literally rich in the kingdom. And you're the ones who will serve me and rule with me and be mine for all of eternity. So which do you want? Wow, the color of the world is really fun for a little while. But in the end, it produces death. The white purity of God sometimes is a burden. Now, you, have, you are dressed in white. If you are aware and following Jesus Christ, if you know you're taking account in your life, you're living a life in repentance, you're wearing robes of white. Remember, that's a spiritual analogy. Wear colorful clothes. Yes, it's okay. I, I remember the day that I finally put my suit coat and my tie away and I said, Thank you, Jesus, I'm delivered. And that was before most people were doing that. So, uh, you know, but still, I found that you can't reach a lot of people that we are living amongst when you have the suit and the tie on. You're going to reach them when you have your boots on and you're out in the pig pen with them. That's where you reach them. And the same goes for the church. When you're in a neighborhood that, that God has placed us in right now that, that has... That has people who, who don't own really nice things. Their first thing they always ask is, do I have to dress up when I come to your church? No. And my, my normal answer is, put on clothes. Yeah, put on clothes. Uh, you know, it, it's not calculated by the, by the amount or the color or, or the riches of our clothes. What God sees as being spiritual and living is the richness of, of our spirit, the richness inside of us when the Spirit of God is active and when the Word of God is active and sharper than any two-edged sword and it cuts all that stuff. It's able to cut between joints and marrows and discern between spirit and soul, or soul and flesh. It's able to do all that. That has to be alive in us. Sadly, today and prophetically, we're living in the day that the, that, that the apostles talked about that reflects the church of Sardis. Look what Peter says. Knowing first, scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to their own lusts, which gets you zombified. New word. Write it down. Paul told Timothy these words. Listen. But you know this, then the last days perilous times will come for men will be lovers of themselves. Does that look like our world right now? Lovers of money. Does that look like our world right now? Got to have more of it. It's been that way for a long time, by the way. Boasters, proud, blasphemers. Disobedient to parents. Unthankful. Unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. And by the way, he's talking about people in the church. Run from that mindset. Walk away from it. Some would say we're supposed to love one another 
we're, we are supposed to love one another, but loving one another doesn't necessarily mean partaking in the death of someone else. Sometimes loving them sa- is saying, my brother, my sister, you're living like a zombie. You're dead and you're trying to project something that's not life, it's death. And then run, because you're probably not going to like what they're going to say. What's this speak to us? Here's what I believe it says, that we are to continually live a life of repentance. Rather than seeking your best life now, it might be best to seek now to repent and constantly turn towards Jesus and remember there's a best life coming. Because Jesus does not use, listen to this, He does not use vain threats. And when he said in this passage, if you don't do these things, I will come to you. But if you will do these things, repent and return, repent and return, repent and return to the way it was at the start. It says, for those who do these things, I will not blot their name out of the book of life. Can I just say it right there? That really shoots the once saved, always saved thing right out of the bucket. Do I think it's easy to lose salvation? No, I think it's so hard. I think it's hard. God runs after us all the time. He's always chasing us down. He's always calling to us. If we have any kind of spiritual hearing whatsoever, He's calling to us. But He's saying, this is not a vain threat. Get it right. Get it right. Because your name can be blotted out of the book of life. It's right there in plain sight i don't use that as a fear tactic i don't think that's right to use it as a fear tactic you you christian gets your act together god's gonna blot your name out of the book of life you know that's just ridiculous but as a body as a church the lord was just about ready to go don't get anxious for the trappings of everything go deep and be aware spiritually of what god's doing in your life and you'll be alive amen So be alive. It all comes down to this. He who overcomes, I'm giving white garments pure and unblemished and you're going to have them forever. And that's what Jesus did for us and that's what we need to watch for all the time. So don't let junk creep in. Then he says this last, I'll end right here. I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. What does that mean? We've had it drilled into our heads that we're gonna, we should fear that moment when the Lord calls our name in heaven because it's suddenly like all of our life is going to be up on a big video screen and everybody's going to be able to see our failures and our few victories. And it's all going to go poof and, and, and you know, there will be a little bit of stuff in there that will be our reward, but everything else will, as if we're supposed to just fear the moment. I look forward to that. What Jesus is saying is, I am going to call out your name. And everybody, all of the angels and and my father, I'm going to confess your name. See, we're supposed to confess his name now. But if we do and live for that name, he's going to confess our name. Oh, my. What's that going to look like? (laughs) Pardon me. Hey, everybody. This here's my friend, my follower. The one I've poured my life into. And he's poured his life into me. May I present to you and to everyone, to my father and all the angels. He says, if you will overcome, that's, he's going he's gonna to confess our, can you imagine that? He's going to confess our name in front of everybody. That's what we should be looking for. Not the trappings of this world. None of it. But that. And father, help us. To always be looking and taking account of our own life and our heart. We know we're not going to get everything right now. We're, we, this life that we're living, we're still learning. We're still growing in knowledge. And, and we haven't arrived yet. But one thing we do know, we have a Savior 
who has died for our sins. He is raised again from the dead. He's seated at the right hand of the Father. He's always making intercession for us. We have the Holy Spirit dwelling in our hearts, and He is leading us and guiding us. And as we follow and obey the Word of God, there will be fruit produced in the world for our efforts and for our prayers. There's things that are going to happen because of it. Those are the promises of God, and that's what we hold on to. Because there's coming a day when this corruption will take on incorruption we will be clothed spiritually in white we will be forever unblemished because of what you have done for us and you will confess our name so right now we confess your name help us lord not to fear in any way confessing your name in public in this world on the marketplace in on twitter on facebook Wherever we are, never to be afraid and ashamed of confessing the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Help us to be that kind of a believer that's actually salt and not sugar. And we'll give you all the praise in Jesus' name.